So this week's parsha, parsha is Bashalach. We read about the story uh, how the Jewish people, after they left Mitzrayim, they left Egypt and they <coughs> they came to the sea, they came to the, the Yamsuf, and uh, looked like there was no way out. Okay. A drop, I guess. And there was different groups. What they should do. Some groups said, let's go back. Let's go fight with them. They felt stuck behind them are the Egyptians. In front of them is the sea. Some said, let's go fight. We have no, nothing else to lose. Others said, let's just follow Let's just follow what they want. Let's do what they want. They'll take us back as slaves. Others said, let's go uh, into the sea. Let's just jump in. Well, we're better to commit suicide than be killed by them. Let the, our enemies kill us. And... Others said, let's pray. There was different groups of Jewish people. How could you have Jewish people, B'nai Yisrael, without many opinions? They say, two Jews, three opinions, right? <laughs> That's true. They say they one time found, went to an island, they found an, a deserted island, and they found a Jew there. They, found, they saw two shuls on the island. They say, what are the two shuls? One I pray and one I don't pray. <laughs> so... <laughs> We always we thank God. We have a lot. We're very opinionated. They say that the prime minister of uh, of Israel, the prime minister of Israel, when he came to uh, to visit the, the president of the United States, so uh, he said, you know, maybe it was Carter, and he said, you know, what's uh, what's Israel? You know, a small little country. You know, I'm a prime minister. I'm a president. Two hundred and fifty thousand people, million people. Yeah, you know, five million people. So he said, Mr. President, you don't understand. You might be a president of 250 million people. I'm a president of 5 million presidents. <laughs> because each one thinks he's running the country. That's true. That's true. <laughs> they say the taxi drivers are running the country, right? <laughs> so anyway, was a lot of confusion. And Moshe, Moses turned to Hashem. Hashem told him, go forward. Oh, there's no way to go forward. What can they do? Go forward to see. Go forward. It's not a time to talk. Go forward. Action. So, Jewish people were a little bit, uh, what should we do over here? And they said, they say there was one person, Nachshem ben Aminodav. He jumped in. He jumped in. He said, "God says to go forward." We're go Moses said, "Told us to go forward." We're going. So he jumped in, and he was going in, and it was starting to to, to to sink, and the sea split. So that teaches us whenever, we, sometimes in life, we find that things look like there's all odds are against us, and it could be it really it really looks that way, and it seems that way. But we have to know if God wants. He created the world, He created nature, and they could, they could always find a way out. You have to be worthy of it. You have to dive into Him. And, and not always, always we, mer we merit a miracle, but we have to realize that God is capable. So, you know, after it says, after the Jewish people came out from the sea, they had the great miracle of the splitting of the sea. They went inside to the Midbar, into the desert, and there, eventually, the, 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 thing, the bread which they brought with them from Egypt, Mitzrayim, was finished. There was no more matzah. They needed food. They started to complain. We need food. We're in the middle of a midbar here. There's a desert. There's no farming land over Jews here. Jews always need food. They need food. Wherever they go. They say, how do you know that the Chinese are around before the Jews? They say, because what, if the Chinese weren't around before the Jews, what were the Jews eating all those years? <laughs> now we have, now with sushi, we have to say, what, what would we do without the Japanese? <laughs> So anyways, the, uh, so Hashem oh, said, don't worry, you can have delivered to your door, it's going to be home delivery. And they had man, the manna, the manna, it was called the lechem and hashemayim. We make a bracha on the bread, we say lechem, hamaitzi lechem in the arts, from the land. On the man, they made the bracha, hamaitzi lechem and hashemayim. It came from heaven, the bread, it didn't come from the earth, it came down. Now, to memorize and commemorate that great miracle, that every day they had their food. They didn't need to worry about working to get food, to get their bread. 
They had it at their doorstep. And this went on for 40 years for the desert. It was a very miraculous period of time in history. You don't they have any test that they won, they had it. Right? And it was a miraculous yeah. bread that they had. It wasn't just a regular loaf of rye bread. It was a miraculous bread and any taste that they wanted. Ice this was something beans. divine. It was a divine bread. And this happened for 40 years. For 40 years, the Jewish people lived on an unbelievable, miraculous level. We don't find a history such a, a, a period of time. To commemorate that every Shabbos, we're supposed to have two breads, two chalas by each meal. Two chalas by each meal to remind us of the manna. Because on Shabbos, even every whole week, every day, they had one manna, one portion for each person, one manna. However, Erev Shabbos, Hashem said tomorrow, told Moshe, to all the Jewish people not to go out tomorrow to collect the manna. There's not going to be any manna. Hashem is also resting. He's not sending it down. You're not going to carry on Shabbos. It's going to all come. You're going to have an Erev Shabbat. Before Shabbos, you're going to get two portions. One for today, for the next day. Don't eat it all on Erev Shabbat. Save it for Shabbat also. To commemorate the two, the Lechem Mishnah, the double bread, the double portion, we have every Shabbos, the double portion. So I said it's, you know, because this is this week's Parsha, where we read about it, the week's Torah portion. So let's take a look at some of the laws about the meal of Shabbos. And uh, we should learn some of the halachas. So page Reish Nun, which is Reish Nun. Reish Nun. Sif Aleph. Sholish Shesudes Chayev Kol Adam. Three meals a person is obligated lechol b'Shabbos to eat every Shabbos. Three meals are the night meal, Friday night, and the two by day. A hint to this is in the Pasik, in the verse, There are three times it says the word today in the Pasik regarding the month. Shanamar, it says in the Pasik, Moshe told the Jewish people, You should eat the man today. Ki Shabbos Hayoyim LaHashem, for it's a day of Shabbos for Hashem. Again, it says the word Hayoyim. Hayoyim Leisim Seu Basada. Today you're not going to find it in the field. When it's the mud's not going to fall in the field, not going to fall today. What you get the the, the Friday, that's what you say for double. Shabbos, the double portion. So we have in this verse three times. So this verse Hayom, was Hayom, said, Hayom Hayom. This verse was said Shabbos morning to Bnei Yisrael. Not Friday afternoon. So therefore, my question to you would be then, how would they know to eat the chalik for the Shabbos, a portion Friday night, and not use the portion that was given for Friday during the day? Ah, good question. Yeah, good this, is, this is what I was... I remember years ago in Yeshiva, we had talked about it, and somehow the answer obviously eludes me. But I'm just curious, if you're sitting and talking, and he's saying this... Let's this take a look. Is, is Let's take a look at the Chumash. Let's take a look the at the Chumash. is right here. This is Chumash right here. I was just reading the Parsha. Let me take a Chumash here. We'll take a look and we'll we'll see. A good question. Because if you said it to them Shabbos already in the morning, it's after the fact. Per se, per se, because remember they were two right. two pieces of mon. Two uh-huh. mon was given on Friday. Because Shabbos, nobody went out to collect. And if you were a wise guy and you took more, it, it turned bad on you. Uh-huh. But yeah, right. make a long story short, is then you had from Friday. Now, Friday morning, you got them on. So you would have food all day long, wouldn't you? Yeah, like yeah. Monday morning, you got up, you had them on in the morning, and it lasted you throughout the day, didn't it? So what happened next morning? There was one again. So the Zelba Shaila, you could ask for Yom Shishi, for Friday. Got up Friday morning, the mon, two pieces of mon were right. lying there. No was yet. So what the question? No, so they were told, they were told. There's a Pusik, it says, the, the, they were told that on, now on the sixth day, Vahibayama Shishi, Lakdu Lecha Mishnah. They collected double, double portion, they okay. saw those double. Okay. So now the leaders of the Jewish people came to Moshe and they said, what's going on over here? Something strange. 
So he told them, Hu Hashem, Hashem. This is what Hashem spoke. That tomorrow is going to be Shabbos. Cook and bake whatever you want it, want for tomorrow today. And the extra, Hanichu Lachem Lemishmeres at the biker. Leave it over for tomorrow morning. But Hanichu Oyes at the biker. They left it over for the morning, like Moshe commanded. V'lo Hibish V'rimel Hayisabai. And there was nothing. It didn't spoil. They didn't have refrigeration then, but nothing happened to it. It was still fresh. Now the next day, so Shabbos already. In the morning, they said, "Should we go out?" He said, "No." Ichlu hayoyim, eat what you have for today. In your hands, today is Shabbos. You're not going to find anything outside. And for six days, this is going to be the order throughout the forty years, throughout the next period. Six days you collect, seventh there won't be. So I think your question is, when they got Friday, double. Mm -hmm. They can't eat double Friday. They eat forever they eat. Whoever left over, it's for Shabbos. That's it. Yes, I got that point, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. What are you trying to make? If every day you got the mon. 100%. The mon lasted all day. Right. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Etc. On Shishi, on Friday morning, you had double the mon, right? right? So that first piece of mon that you were supposed to eat on Friday lasted you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Correct, correct, okay. correct. So it's now, dinner is already Shabbos. It's Yom Shishi Balaylo. Okay. So did you have from the first piece? And the rabbi was saying that the second piece of mon is, is to uh, the, next the three meals the three meals that we eat starts Friday night, the first meal. Sit down to Kiddush Friday night is the first meal of Shabbos. Right. You don't count breakfast because we don't eat breakfast. Chas for Cholel or Shabbos in the free. Come here. Shabbos, come here. That's it. <laughs> but after after davening, you're going. You make Kiddush and you have lunch. Right. And then God willing, two hours later in the winter time, you get a Shalashidis, a Sudash Lishi. So there's your third meal. Yeah, so the answer to your question, a very good question. The answer is that the two, the Lecha Mishnah is not, is not to commemorate that the, 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 what was only in the Shabbos. It was to commemorate that they found those two yeah. at the oh, door on oh, Friday. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's a good question. What he's saying is that Friday night, they were still eating the month of the Friday's month. It wasn't a Shabbos month, it's true. And you know what? Even on Shabbos itself, they only had one. So it wasn't two. The, me the commemoration was that, that the two came down. The fact down. that there were two. Right. Yes, there's no question about right. it. That's why yeah. we have two colors. Yeah, right. And by the way, not, we'll see soon, not everyone holds that the Suda Shlishitake has to have two. Maybe he doesn't have to have two. Oh, really? We'll see. Let's take a look further. V'chayim ko'odom v'fzoya ashtei kikaris. Siv beis. Everyone is, per every person is obligated to make the bracha hamaitzi and Shabbos on two breads, shleim mois. Not only two, but they should be complete. You can have two pieces to complete shleim mois. Echad anoshim, bechad noshim. Both men and women. This is not something for the man, even though, you know, when there's a man in the household, he's usually making the lachamisha, but he's just being moitzi, everyone else in the family. But in reality, she's chayiv just like the man is chayiv to make the lachamisha. But by... They don't each have to have their own Lecha Mishnah. By one person of the family, one person lifting it up, the two breads, and making the brach on it, that's good enough for the whole family. So, you know, not everyone has to lift up their own. They were told all to collect, men and women, to go collect Lecha Mishnah. It wasn't a man's job just to go out and collect the, the, the bread, the man. Everyone's job. The kids too? Kids weren't, uh, they're not in charge of the food and the kids stay home and the, the parents give them the food. <laughs> so the, the kids, uh, if, they're, they're, uh, if they're the age of chinuch, if they're the age when you have to ch educate the child, then yes, but uh, they have to give them the education. So they're six, seven years old, they already understand the concept of Shabbos, of Kiddush, Lech Mishnah, yes. You should, you should have them hear the Lech uh, Mishnah, or you say the Bracha. If they're little, you don't have to, they're playing, you don't have to bother them. But, you know, and as even younger, if you want, you could, if they want, they're excited about it, it's a beautiful thing to bring them in. But you're only obligated to teach the child at the age that they're able to understand the concept of Shabbos and, 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 and what you're doing. Otherwise, it might be a little bit of stress for them, you know, and you want it to be a good experience. There should be stress. 
Right, it's generation. They can't stress the children. Now, the Lecha Mishnah, the double portion came down on Friday. And one of them, they ate, they ate on Friday. So there's only one left to Shabbat. <laughs> that was 10 minutes ago. <laughs> exactly that issue was 10 minutes ago. Oh, oh. In Kolak it's Kolak Kolak. Kolak. <laughs> We went to this. Very good. So He's a scientist. So what was that? Ah, that answers everything. So what was that? So <laughs> the bottom line is the concept, from what I understand from the Rabbi Torres, is the reason we have the two chalas laying on the table in front of us for Shabbat is not the fact that they, what they ate specifically, but more so to commemorate the fact that mm -hmm. there were two pieces of mun laying there on Friday. So that this way, they ate one on Friday and one on Shabbos, and everybody was happy. And it tasted like ice cream, according to this gentleman. Mm -hmm. I had now, once discussing with the Arabs, you know, I speak Arabic. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And he told me the man was by them because they are Muslim. Yeah. It said man, they said man hada. What it what it is? So man, it's like what it is. So the word man is Arabic. Because that's how they say what it, man well, hada. Hebrew what, also, what, you know. Here it also say man. It say ma, yeah. not man with noon. Mem hey, it's different. The ain sarech she gives the we don't need to cut both chalas. The mitzvah is that you hold both in your hand. However, you only need to cut one of them. The mitzvah is not to eat two chalas. It's to hold two chalas. It's not to eat two chalas. It's to hold two chalas. The, the Pesach says. They gathered lechem They were not obligated to eat the whole piece of money. They were, had to gather two. So you, by putting the two together, you're being yoyed. So what happens if you have someone who did not wash yet, and the, everyone else washed, and they don't want to wait because he didn't wash it, he's going to the kitchen. He could listen, <coughs> in, even though he has to make his own bracha moitzi when he comes back. But he's yoytza, by him, the fact that the, 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 the one in the, 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 the head of the household, is taking up the two chalas in his hands, is yoy to the, the zeicher to the lechem mishnah. Lik to lechem mishnah. They have to cut it with a knife? Well, according, that's the way according to the Benish meals, Chai. meals, meals in, uh, in, in, in the past nice. were very yeah. formal. Right. And halacha also, you see in Jewish law, everything very formal. The so meal, we, uh, we, we call, everything's very formal. Going. Today's days, you put a piece of leather and grabs the piece, right? 100%. But, but according to the Ben Ishchai, it says liftoa et apat. Liftoa, you mean you cut take it. it and cut it in your hand. It doesn't uh -huh. say with the knife. So he does. They do so that. We, we, as far as I know, we cut it with the hand and we give everything. Yeah. 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 If it's a breakaway challah, yeah. then you can just. Uh, that's true. Breakaway, you don't have so many. It's uh, a way, eight pieces. If I have thirty they, people yeah, in the table, he breaks it up into thirty pieces. But Svarim might have been eaten there for Shabbos. They, they, they don't cut do. it. All the Svarim across, across, cut, yeah. across the board. Us, we cut. They go according to the Ben Ishchai. That's the way. So this is a minhag already. Right. Very nice. We're Europeans, so obviously it's more diplomatic. Uh, more intelligent. No, chas v'cholele, chas v'cholele. It's just it's a matter of uh, the minhag of what we're used to. Right. Yeah. Right. Dal the Rebbe, I'm sure, used a knife when he cut it. No. You hear what? You hear what he said? No, I didn't. Say it again. The bread tastes better when you when you pull it apart with your hands. I think there you go. There's no artificial. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> the stainless steel of the knife wouldn't cause an problem. Which one if you wish that? <laughs> no, but our rabbi said, Liftzoa et apat. Why do you not say, Lachtoch et apat? Lachtoch uh, with a knife. Uh, yeah, Liftzoa, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, to it's break. Cold. Yeah. V'tzarech, the next paragraph, it's in Sivbeis. V'tzarech, it's in El Yoyna. We should cut the upper bread. The halacha is you're not supposed to pass over a mitzvah. You have a mitzvah in front of you, you're not supposed to pass over to one mitzvah to go to another mitzvah. You should always do the mitzvah that's first in front of you, right in front of you. For example, we put on tefillin. You're supposed to put on the the first the arm tefillin, then the head. 
So we also, we, and, and we also first put on a talus before the tefillin. So we set up our, our, our tefillin zekel that way that we first going to hit the talus, then we're going to hit our shalyad and the shalreish. Whether your right hand, or if your right is going to hit first, because you don't want to pass over a mitzvah to go to another mitzvah. It's not respectful, not that it's. Everything should be in the seder. So, how about so the challah which is higher, the challah which is higher, that's closer to you, to clo- that's the one that you should cut first. Yeah, but mitzvah ba'le adcha al tach mitzena. Right, the two chalot here. Mitzvah ba'le adcha, you want it closer to me, I have to cut it. Right? What is this? This is all the day of Shabbos, Shabbos by day meal, or the night of Yom Tif meal. Because Yom Tif is like Shabbos, you also have Lechem Mishnah. However, Belel Shabbos, the night of Shabbos, there is there are those that are based on Kabbalah, Kabbalistic reasoning. Belel Shabbos, Yeshnoik, and Mithamidu Alem of Tzayel Tachtoyne. Some dafke cut from the bottom one. Okaday shall lave al mitzvis, menichana tachtoyna karabat some yois mayena. In order that they should not transgress the the Indian that you shouldn't go or pass over the mitzvah, they make sure the bottom one they pull it closer to them. So they both they, they ha they're, they're cutting for the bottom one, they they want to do the Kabbalah, and as well they pull it closer and they should fit with the halacha. You shouldn't pass over the mitzvah. It's almost like Pesach. You take the three matzo, the one in the middle, you break it. And then it says, "Ain't come my brother mitzvah klal." Oy or loy chila yoyin v'shas berchas amaytzi. O benich ma'isel mata v'isel la. During hamaytzi, they they have the higher. They they have the one which is higher. They put it underneath while they're saying hamaytzi, and they cut it. Just a moment, please. I don't understand what you mean by this. I, I personally have never seen it. You have two chalas laying side by side. If the person is right-handed, he's going to take the, the chala on the right, it's the closest one to him. This concept that's being brought out of uh, Tachtona and El Okay, so this... I'm not familiar with this. Right, so I tell you. Where is this, uh, this, this done by Chabad? No. The truth is... Some people, they take the two chalas one on top of the other. In this case, this, would, that, this is what this is talking about. The situation was that you would have one on top of the other. In actuality, the minig and Chabad, the custom of Chabad, is not like the Shulchan Aruch. And we do the it side thing. by side. Yes. And I you have them, it. hold them side by yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hold them side by side. Right, this I know too. And... So if I'm right-handed, I'll use the challah on the right. If right. I'm left-handed, I'll take the challah right. on the left. Right. And, both. And, and, actually, and actually, the custom is that Friday night, you keep them um, side by side, exactly. And by day, you keep the right one slightly, slightly higher. Mm-hmm. But the Misa, there is another minig, I don't know if there are any kehilas which are doing it today, any places, that they do it one on top of the other. This is what's mentioned in Halacha. One on top of the other. There is a mimer of the Alter Rebbe, the Torah explaining that the, the two different customs, whether you do one on top of the other, one side by side, really are, uh, have to do with Kabbalah. And he explains why our minig, our custom do side by side, is the way you're supposed to be doing it, and he explains what what the, the significance between one on top or one side by side. What? Who the other? Yeah, and 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 a mimer chassidus, not not in the shul. Because the darizal, the minute of darizal, is that you take you take you take the two halot and you put them upside on the bottom one upside down. So you have the two of them with the bottoms of each one touching each other, and you hold it diagonally. You hold it diagonally. You, you hold it diagonally with the two bottoms touching each other. Uh huh. And, and because we, and it's because it, 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 the, the real mehigah from the Kubalim, like the real Kubalim in Spahat, the Rizal, they used to have 12 halot. Like, right. Like, 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 and, and two, one, the two ones in the middle, they, just, they were arranged like, like, like two sevalim. And, and ones in the middle were. 
put, put like that. To, to uh-huh. There are many, there are some, a lot of Rebbes today that still take 12 Chalas, because the Lechem Haponim in the base of Mikdash had 12, and, there are, and the Arizal, according to Kabbalah, had 12. And by the way, you'll see a lot of the breakaway, the breakaway Chalas are usually 12. A lot of them are 12, because they want to make the kind of... And they have to finish all the 12? Forever have 12? I don't know if you have to eat all 12. How we can do that? They give it out to everyone. There's many, plenty of chassidim. It wasn't the mini, the Chabad tish, rabbis just the two. Mm-hmm. And, and it's supposed to be arranged in the form of two segolim that are f- facing each other, but the points of the segolim are facing each other. Uh-huh. Like there's two on the Have sides, you seen it? And, and, and one, in the, one, in the, one in the middle. You know, Did you ever see them do that? Huh? And they saw, I, I know that I've seen them who believe in Eretz Israel. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they, have, they, have, they have tiny little chalot. Not, not, ah, not, not I'm sitting here thinking of chalot <laughs> the house. It'll cover the table. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, Sif Gimel. What's going here? Okay. You know, in general, you know, Shabbos, we, we, the, the meal surrounds the chalot. You have the chalot. That was not only really Shabbos, really life then was, maybe, maybe pre-war, but life was that people, a meal was, you wash. A meal was you had bread, that's what a meal, a meal is bread. In nowadays, especially in, in, in America, so there's plenty, where times are plenty, and people have meals, just a meat, just a fish. In those days, a piece of meat, a piece of chicken, it was for Shabbos, for Yom Tif. Every day, you had your bread, you had your bread. If you had a little chicken and a little fish, it was it was to eat, be eaten with the bread. But the bread was always, the, that's the meal. And still today, I think in, in certain countries it's still that way, where every meal, they, they have bread by every meal. And by Americans, uh, bread, you know, car, carbs and, oh, and, and, and diet. Yeah, you have to ask for it. Yeah, you have to ask for it, huh? That, that works? Sometimes. <laughs> you used to be in the restaurants, they give you on the table bread, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, not anymore. Not anymore, huh? So, no, no we've talked about here. Nobody eats bread. It's the other side. People have meals totally just on on, on fish and salads and meats, which you you, you don't see that in halacha. Everyone's everyone's discussing the challah and the bread, and all the even the berachas hananin, all the halachas. Why, when you wash hamaytzi, when you wash for bread, you say hamaytzi, you don't make a bracha on the bread. You don't need to make a bracha on any other food. Why? Because this wasn't just some pasuk. This was logic because everything else came. Secondary to the bread, everything was part of the bread. You, you, the bread is the main meal. You made a bracha on, on the bread. Everything else is potter. But today it's a, a, in the bread. The bread is just a side thing, you know. If you're eating the bread, Shabbos you have to wash. So you wash, right? People go on the whole week. They don't wash. It's funny. We're talking about bread in the army, Israeli army. They used to give us bread always old, never fresh. They used to. I used to see it boxes for tomorrow, not for today. And I ask once, once it gets healthier. They don't oh, give you either. Really? Stale bread is healthier? Yeah. yeah. Penicillin? I don't know. No, they, they have, have to work the day. To, <laughs> it's like the <laughs> difference between whole wheat and. Ah, really? That you're healthier with uh, old bread? Probably because it's, it's, it's a little more difficult to digest. To, and the body ah, has to ah, work ah, a little ah, bit. Ah, yeah, that's a good point. Interesting, and also whole wheat. And if you look in, in, in Shulchan Aruch, whole wheat was considered secondary. Oh, yeah? Whole wheat was that they didn't refine it. They, they, you, you're, 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 you're grinding the grinding the kernels with the shaft together. That's whole wheat. It's the whole piece, right? That was considered that was considered the poor man's bread right. years ago. <laughs> Today but, only. But what? The, the, a man, someone who has money, he buys a, a, a fine flour which is sifted, refined. We find yeah. <laughs> no, you, even the Gemara says that they, that they're not supposed to eat bread straight from the oven. So Hot bread. Hot bread. That's not healthy. Sif Gimel. Mitzvah leftzayeh b'Shabbos prusa gedoyla shetaspek loy l'chol asuda. It's a mitzvah on Shabbos to cut a large piece that you should have for the whole meal. A large piece. Kishen nidek mechavim to the Shabbos shechavetz lechol by harvey. Because you want to show that you appreciate the meal and you cut yourself a large piece. You're not stingy about the piece. You cut yourself a nice large piece for the whole meal. Aye, during the week it's not appropriate etiquette to do that. 
You take a little piece, you know, whatever you need. You take more half a piece of bechoyl during the week. A last is kain. It's not one shouldn't do so. But you need a kedav. It seems like you're you're a hungry man. You're not eating. We come back. I'm still in hoyel. When the oyse can call him by sechel. Since an entire week you don't do it, so people see you're, you're a man of etiquette. Ela b'shabbos bolvad. You only do this on Shabbos. It's clear that the reason you're doing it is nikar hadav rishin the oyse b'shul afsonis. You're not doing this because you're you, you want to gorge yourself. Ela b'shul cover the Shabbos. Even to on the Shabbos, you're showing that the food of Shabbos is important. The special. meal is important. Special. <laughs> Those are, are eating the meal and there's one person who is making a hamaitzi. If he gives out the piece to them, they, could, they shouldn't eat their piece of bread till he first tastes it, for the one who made the bracha. This is only in a case that they're not allowed to eat it if they are being yoytze from him. But if they each have their own challah, their own lechem mishnah in front of them, in front of each person they gave each one two, two challahs, two bilkalach. And the only, they're just listening to the host make the bracha. They're hearing the bracha, they're, they're being yoytze the bracha. So in that case, they don't need to wait for him because they're only listening to the bracha from him. The Lechem Mishnah, they don't need from him. They have their own Lechem Mishnah. So then they don't need to wait for him to taste. They can cut their bread and have their own bread right away. After he makes the bracha. Right. But if they wait for him, they're waiting for him. He has to be the last one to wash because he has to make a mochi for everybody. That's what I used to do. When I have 30, 40 people on the table, I used to wash the last one. Everybody's sitting and waiting till I finish and make a mochi and then I give everybody. Who is this you still have 30, 40 people? <laughs> I know I have a small apartment. If I have 15, I'd be happy. Oh, 15 is good. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. The Heim Yoitzim Dei Chavasim HaShashem Yomana Baruch Hashem Yomayiti The top of page Rish and Aleph Shemavarach Halacha Mishnah If they have their own and they're just listening to the bracha from the Balabais Vo'oichlim Yoitzim Lecha Mishnah and they're eating from their own Lecha Mishnah they don't need to wait Avil, however, in Yesh Lechem Mishnah with Nekol Lechem, and if each one of them has the Lechem Mishnah in front of them, She'enam Sukukim Litem Lechem Mishnah Shalafonim, they don't, they don't, Wait on me. I'm sorry, I read it, uh, yeah, so until now we're t- talking about that they were all going to eat from the hosts Lechem Mishnah, the Balabais, then they, can, they have to wait, let him taste, taste the first. How about the Kiddush? If each one has their own lechem mishnah, they then If they don't need his lechem mishnah, they're not eating from his bread. They're eating from their bread. They don't need to wait for him. The same thing by kiddush. No, if they have lechem mishnah, they make. I make my lechem mishnah. I have to make my own kiddush too. Only lechem mishnah. I can get to by no. the host Kiddush, Lechem Mishnah my own. Kiddush and Lechem Mishnah is separate. So totally independent. Yeah. Uh-huh. You can be Yoytza Kiddush and not Lechem Mishnah. You can make Lechem Mishnah. Mm-hmm. Whichever, it's up to you. You want to be your own, you want to listen. If you, you know? Because when you go to eat somewhere, they ask you, you want to make your own Kiddush? So, um, Friday night, if someone could, it's better to make your own kiddush. Prefer your own. If you're a guest in someone's home. If you're a guest in someone's house, you, you know, you can't go on, you, you, you know, uh, you can't uh. take their wine. There's a story, famous story was the, you know, the Seder night. At one point, we take the the the, 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 the wine, the second cup of wine after kiddush. And we're reading the Haggadah, when we read it to the Makkas, the ten plagues, we pour out for each one of the plagues. Doms, Fardeya, Kinnah, we pour. This Haggadah is so after we read all the ten, the God says, the God says brings that one of the Tanoim said that you can make an acronym, a Rosh Hashanah, so all of them, the ten together, an abbreviation. Rabbi Yehuda HaYinoisim Samanim, the Tzach Adash Barchav, which is, and we also pour three times, the Tzach one time for Dan Svadei Akinim, the next one one time, and three times. So all together we pour 13 times, right? 
So once the famous Shagas Ayyad of Ayyad Ginsburg, mm-hmm. he lived uh, 300 years ago. So the Shagas Ayyad was, uh, he was a big genius, but at th- that time there were many tzaddikim that would try, in order to, to, to gain atonement for sins that they felt that they had to gain atonement for, they would travel, send, go into self-imposed exiles. They would travel around to, to different cities and towns without knowing, people knowing who they were. And they'd be like, and they would just go to the shul. Like a beggar. Would, yeah, like a beggar to go to the shul and be invited out for a home for the meal. And they would learn and they would go around like this and they would live a life uh, of poverty. And, 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 and then a year later they would come home and that they would do this as Soma Golos. Now, so the Shagasari was on one of these uh, trips. And he came to some. Uh, to, he was in the came into the shul for a Pesach night, and after after the meal, all the people that didn't have a place to eat would wait near the door, and people would take home their guests to come. So someone invited him over, but the, the host that he was by was stingy about the wine. He had wine. It wasn't like he was. Uh, he had wine, but he was stingy with the giving the guests the wine. So he didn't give him a lot of wine. So he just had enough, just, sure. you know, for to make it the four cups, but. When it came to pouring the wine, he was afraid to pour ten because he's not going to have uh, his his wine to say the Haggadah. He's not going to have any more of the four cups. So he only poured a little bit by the three times by the abbreviations of the ten of the ten. But he the in the saman and the tzach adash bacha. Anyways, it came after they they had the matzah and he drank the cup and they had the mar and now's the meal and. Uh, so the, 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 during the meal, so the, the, the host says to the guest, oh, maybe say a word of Torah, share with us something. So he didn't know who his guest was. Anyways, uh, so his guest said that, I never understood why in the Haggadah we read the Makis in abbreviation, the plagues. We say out the ten plagues, the ten Makis, and then we say it in abbreviated form. What's the point of saying in abbreviated form? We said the ten. He said, but now that I came to your home, now I realize why. Because if I wouldn't have had the abbreviated version, I would have poured 13 times, I wouldn't have had the whole wine anymore. So then he already realized his, his guest is not just a regular guest, he's an esteemed guest. Yeah. It's a silly question, right? Yeah. I, I thought it was customary for the wine glasses to be filled. Right. So he bypassed that particular... He saw that the host was oh, not no, going to refill he it. To conserve, but, yeah, so he couldn't fulfill the full glass. He, so he didn't want. He didn't uh, yeah. want to pour. So he poured a drop out. Uh, yeah, no, no, it wasn't no, no, as full. Is... You're right. But by the way, the din of full cup, as long as you have um, a revius, which is around three ounces, even if it's not full, you're allowed to make it a shot. That's considered full. Okay. It's not full, but it, it your yes. halacha is good. But the best thing is to have a full, of course. You want to have the best. Because the full cup. Laugh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about a full cup? But yeah, but yeah. Yeah. to have it molly. So he said that's what he understood why, uh, <laughs> why the Behudu gave us. Yeah. Sif hey. By the same halacha applies to Kiddush. By like Kiddush, we also, we, the, first the host drinks, and drinks of it, and then he gives to everyone else. He doesn't need to, to daf, he doesn't need to drink, he could pour out from his cup, in another cup, and he could drink from them. But before others should drink from that wine, first he should drink. Because he made the brach on it. Sif hey. Afilu ochel kol adam. Ochel adam, kol minim adanen. Even if someone ate many delicacies, different types of delicacies, many different dishes, even if they are from the five grains, it's not enough that you ate a whole beautiful meal, you need to have bread. Our sages have required us to have bread at the table. You can have chicken, you can have the, the best challah in the world. You got to have challah. And you can have cakes and everything. You can have pastas. They want the bread that you wash on and you bench. Mm-hmm. Furthermore, in the parentheses, 
The verse says that a person lives off the bread. The bread gives him sustenance. The Torah refers to the manna, to the manna's bread. This is the bread. When they saw the manna, they said, what is this? It's all coming down, what is this? What is this, the white stuff? They didn't know what <coughs> but That's the bread I was telling you about, that Hashem's giving you. That's what it is. It was lechem bread. So to commemorate it, it's not the cholent, it's not the gefilte fish, it's specifically... So why they call it man and not lechem? If someone has money, enough only for either fish or the, the bread, he has to bet the bread first. That's the challah's no, day. The question is why we call it man, mana, man and not a, lechem. Because you told them, they ask what it is, it's lechem. Chumash specifically it? says man, specifically Ishtarayehu, they asked manu. They, they said, what is this? You're what? saying, why the Torah? Because... Lechem. Okay, so it's called Lechem. You're right, it was Lechem, but the Torah gave a special nickname for this Lechem. Lechem, regular Lechem, you have bread all over in Torah. This Lechem was a special Lechem. It had a special name to it. It was a, a heavenly bread. Now, how much does one have to eat? You have to eat the whole challah? How much do you have to eat? People are careful about the carbs, so if they're careful the whole week, Thank you. on Shabbos, you still should eat challah, but what's the minimum? You know, a lot, not everyone eats the minimum. Some people uh, ask, what's the maximum? But if you want to know what's the minimum, you know, because you're, you're, you're on a diet, you're, you're careful, you're allergic, whatever it is, if you're allergic, you also today, you know, you, should eat, you can have spelt and other types, uh, you know, gluten-free, oat. <laughs> It's actually an argument, a subject of dispute, how much you have to eat. Some say you should eat a bit more than the size of an egg. If it's only the size of an egg, it's not more than the size of an egg. In Yotzebah, this, this opinion holds that it's considered like a temporary eating. It's just like a snack. You have to sit down and eat a little more than a size of an egg. Then you can call that eating a meal, not just uh, something you're popping in your mouth. However, others say, With just a kazayis, just with the size of an olive, you already fulfill your obligation of Lecha Mishnah, of the Suda. And the Alter Rebbe over here in the Shulchan Aruch does not take an opinion on the matter. He leaves it up for discussion. He just quotes his two opinions and he doesn't have an opinion as to which one is more correct or not. It's two shittas and he just keeps it that way. So what is the Minhag in Chabad? What do you do? You eat till you're yeah, it's full. not usually a shayla. Most people are eating... Uh, you know, if everybody. someone has a reason why it's not, he feels it's not good for him, so he can rely on the woman's opinion. You know? The Yesh Oymer there is an opinion that holds a third meal the last meal so the shlishes you don't need to have bread the last meal that's not the main halacha the main halacha is that he's supposed to have um, bread also for the third meal but there is opinions that say you can do it with mazainis or you can do it with fish or even with fruit and you can be yaitz of a fruit and there's discussions about Shabbos, Erev, Pesach. When Erev, the day before Pesach, fall on the Shabbos. Chametz you can't have, because by the time you finish here, by Shalosh Shudas already in the afternoon, you're ready, it's already close to Pesach, so you're ready after the time, you're not allowed to eat Chametz anymore. Matzah, you're not allowed to eat, because Erev, Pesach, you have to wait till the night to eat Matzah. So you're stuck. No bread, no Matzah. So what do you, what do, you do for Shalosh Shudas? Potatoes. So then we rely on the other opinions. You can have fruits, you can have fish. And there's even an opinion that, you're, that the third meal, if you say words of Torah, that itself is, a, is, is, is considered the Suda Shoshit. And when you do, when you do Shachis, not Shachis, the first meal on our Pesach, you're not, to, not allowed to no, eat the first me, the first meal we eat early, right? You remember the Seder, the water we have on, a, on, on the Arab Pesach, Shabbos, we dive in like 7 in the morning. We dive in early. We dive very early. And we eat uh, a meal. We, ha we have a meal. From 9 to 10. Early. 
Before yeah, we've been early meal before the time that you have to get rid of the chametz. Right. Right. You only have, you just have enough for everyone from the family, from the challah. And your house is all, your house is all clean for Pesach, right. you know what? Right. And any leftover bread, you put it down the toilet, right? So that's the, 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 the pre-Pesach Shabbos. So you can't do so the shlishes then? So the shlishes is later on, after chatzos. Yeah. Uh, so you have to wait. So that's why... Don't usually wait. we eat it after mincha, those eat, or, or before yeah, mincha. But, yeah, there's no way. There's no way you could do so the shlishes with bread. So the only one is to do is just uh, either fish or, uh, or Fruit. food. Yeah. And fish, you're not supposed to eat anything on Pesach that you're going to eat at night. By the way, that there was a Shabbos that ever Fabreng one time had a Shatish a Fabreng on that Shabbos. And what were they going to serve? What were they going to serve? So everyone they had bananas. They gave everyone bananas and water. What are bananas? Yeah. <laughs> and why you not allowed to drink? Yeah, happened two years. Why? Uh, Anything has to do with the soda with the cow, or you're not allowed to have before. There are items that you can eat by the seder. You're not going to supposed to eat before. So you're, also, fish. Fish. you're also not supposed to stuff yourself too much also because you're supposed to leave room for the Seder. You right. know, there was once, uh, they say there was once, say, there were two beggars, one was a Jewish beggar and a non-Jewish beggar. They're friendly with each other. And the Jewish beggar told his friend, he said, I want to tell you tonight, it's Passover, Pesach, and the Jewish people have an, a really an elaborate meal. It's unbelievable what the <laughs> meal they put out for this night. They put out such meats and, and dishes and it's a Seder night, and, and, and they have the silver and everything so beautiful. Do I'm telling you like this. You come with me, you say you're Jewish and everything. You just stand next to me, we'll go to the synagogue after the prayers. You'll stand there, you won't say, they'll just invite you over, and you have a great meal. This is Gewaldic, he's very excited, he's waiting over there, he gets sorry enough. His friend goes, the Jewish friend goes to one house, he gets picked up to another house. And he comes there anyways, it's very exciting. They pour him a cup of wine. This is Gewaldic. He started off a meal with a cup of wine. What could be better? But then they take out books, and they're reading books as they, for so long. He, this is very difficult. This is what's going to Haggadah. It's, it's not, not ending. Finally, they're pouring him another cup. Okay, we're getting closer to the meal. Another cup of wine, okay. But then they come finally, they're bringing something out. He, hard crackers. He says, what's, what's my, my friend, what was he telling me? What type of uh, Baba Mice is this? And he's waiting, okay, a little bit more. They bring out something, a salad, bitter herbs. He's mamish coughing up, what is this stuff? He has to eat it to be polite. And then they tell him after that, so finally he says, well, it's probably right now is going to be the meal. I'm waiting, this fancy meal I heard about. They tell him, take the cracker <laughs> with the bitter herbs and eat it both together. <laughs> and lean to your left. This is like, this is it. He got up and he stormed out of the house. The next day he sees a friend, you liar, what are you telling me, bubble mice? And then he said, what happened? He told him the story. He said, you would have waited one more minute. <laughs> that would have been the full meal. Yeah. Gotta got patience. Pesach night, you have to have patience. However, I gotta tell you, I was in a family, a very dear friend, and they decided at the fish that they ran out of time because they wanted, to get, they wanted to get to the afikomen, and I think they skipped everything. My son was, uh, that was he, went, he went nuts, <laughs> and he left. <laughs> and I walked him home, and I got there after everything. It's crazy. <laughs> well, I tell you, you, you can't destroy the Seder for that. You have to, if you, it's better to eat it before not midnight, afikomen, but if you can't, yeah, you have to continue the meal. Sure. It's definitely better to, but... You should not push the meal and ruin the whole meal. You shouldn't feel... This is the only night of the year that everyone gets together. It's supposed to be beautiful. If there's pressure, and, and, and it's not. It's the worst thing. It's not, supposed to be an enjoyable night. Talk about our heritage. Talk about our background. It, this is not a time to pressure. My son-in-law is in Hatzala. Now he's the head of Hatzala in Jersey. And he used to live in Bay Parkway. So all my kids came for the Seder, and he got a call. Yeah. Uh, we're starting the Seder. And they should take the ambulance to Manhattan. So we finished the set there, it was 31 o'clock, and he came, he came back. Now he's sitting down, he went to make the set there. So everybody got to sleep, I told him I'm going to stay with you. I stayed with him till about 3 o'clock. He did the whole set there. Wow. <laughs> it was funny. I was told by the rabbi from college who passed away. Um, that, that uh, Pesach morning, a young couple, uh, Bal Shubes, they prepare the house for Pesach, you know, clean, everything they prepare. And like an hour before Yom Tov, they said, let's happen up. 
to 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 be open to say that we're so tired, both of us, you know. We walk in, we, we clean the house and everything. They slept, they slept, they slept, they wake up, it's only in the morning. <laughs> we came to him and he said, what should we do? We, we miss the Seder. He said, make sure tonight you don't sleep. <laughs> 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 That's it. <laughs> There's a That's story cute. told of a rabbi this happened to, that the first night of the Seder, he fell asleep. And when he woke up, it was almost chatzos, and he did a very, very fast Seder. The second night, he stayed up, and he took his time, and he did make it. Up. Make up. His Rebbe told him the next day that the second Seder was, the first Seder was more Mekubal than the second Seder that he did. He had more of a feeling and a more of a concern for the Seder on the first night, when even though it was rushed, than it was the second mm -hmm. night where he took his time. I remember reading this story. I don't remember which one of the Hasidic masters it was, but there was a story told about it. Yeah, let's finish up. We'll go to Mayrev. It's, it's, it's best to make a bracha on, 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 on two hadasim, two bunches of hadasim, myrtle branches. Koydim Kiddush Shalayla before Kiddush by night, Vashalayim before Kiddush by day. By the third meal, we don't have Kiddush, so you should do it in the middle of the Sudash the third meal. We don't have this minute, but I think there are people that have hadasim for Shabbos. I spend the Shabbos by the Koysel, yeah. Mincheh. By the cold Min Kherim Shabbos, Friday night and Shabbos morning. It's Temanim and Sparty people, there. they walk around with Atasim, with this, all different this, and give people, make a bar, make a bar, a Shabbos. What bracha do you make? Bar Abbey Rimin Epsomim. Bar Abbey Rimin Epsomim. Because Shabbos have to make 100 brachas and they wanted to have more brachas. Ah, 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 so ah, they walk around with branches. Ah, but, I, but I think this is a separate thing. This is a separate nice. Indian, which it's not our meaning to do it, and it seems like it's based on Kabbalah. Based on the sources Kabbalah. I see here, it's based on Kabbalah, Kabbalistic reasoning. To have by each meal to murder maybe there are Kabbalists that have it, but it's not the custom. You walk into a Sephardi shul, you see Shabbos, they always say Hadassim, like a, a, this, like a flower, but it's not a flower. French is Hadassim. Yeah. So people should walk by. The, the, we only have it Sukkot time. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and even if it's Sukkot, when we have, we're not making a bracha. Sukkot, when we have, we're not making a bracha. Right. But every Shabbos, they have it. Right. 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 Siv Ches. Im yeish ksatz If for some reason a person at night could not eat the meal, Friday night, he stuffed or, or something happened, he fell asleep, <laughs> fell asleep, yeah, he had to go somewhere, he couldn't eat the meal Friday night. So he wasn't, you know, say, didn't fulfill obligation the first meal. So don't worry, you could do it the next day. You could do the three meals in one day. However, at night, you're still obligated in Kiddush. Kiddush, you shouldn't push off. So if you feel you can't have the meal or the time constraints, at night, make Kiddush. Have just a little bit, just a, a kazayis, a, a mazayinus, or yishter de visayin, or drink another visa wine. If you don't have a kazayis, by a Kiddush, let's say, there's no more mazayinus, no more anything made from pastas or anything, or cakes, you could make for Kiddush makam suda, you could drink another visa wine. Drink three ounces of wine. And and that will be that will be it. That will not be for the meal, because you're not washing. You're supposed to wash and have actual bread. You're not having actual bread, but you'll be yoytze kiddush, and your meal you'll push for the next day. Avol einsham oynis. However, there's no oynis. You're not. There's no reason to do this. In lasses king, you shouldn't do this. The halach is that even erev Shabbos by day, Friday by day, we should already not have big meals by day, in order to make sure that we're not fully full when we come to find a meal. A person comes home, he doesn't want to eat, that's not the way it's supposed to be. He's supposed to, before Shabbos, a few hours before, he tame down your eating, you don't have any big meals, because on Friday night, that should be the meal. But if a situation arises, this is how you should do it. The next day, you could do it. Three meals in one day. You, you have two neshamot, so you have to fill up all the neshamot. you keep a war, my father was in, go the, to my in the army, yeah. Yeah. and he was in Suez Canal. And he asked before Shabbos to bring him grape juice. Eh? The kids are some shoulders drinking and nothing left for Avdole. So he comes to Shabbos and he told uh, this, I need to make Avdole. Either beer, there's no way in the army to get a beer in the war. Alcohol. Alcohol. Uh, give me wine. For sure. I need grape juice. Eh? I can't get it. So he said, I can't eat. I must make Avdole. I can't eat. 
He said, it's a war time, you're not supposed to have keep any aloha. You're allowed to eat what you, we give you. He said, no, <laughs> it's not so dangerous. We are on the border, you know. Because uh, till Sunday night, a helicopter came from Mushalayim with the grape juice. Otherwise, he, he fast. Till uh, Sunday night. Uh, and it's a big tzaddik. No, he said, I can, I can, uh, the yeah, I must make Abdullah. And year? he was worried about that, so he kept the grape juice from Shabbos, so she should have once the Shabbos. When is the first year outside? Not two months. Two months.